Madam President, uh, I come to the, the floor just uh, about an hour or so after a, a motion to proceed to take up the Paycheck Fairness Act. And I struggled with my decision as to, to whether to move to a measure that uh, I feel was flawed in terms of its approach to a solution uh, or to, to recognize that, that perhaps this was more an exercise in, in political messaging than an effort to try to resolve what I believe is an issue. And in, in sorting through uh, all aspects, not only the merits of the legislation, the, the facts as they exist back home, the facts as they exist around this country where we see pay, pay disparity between men and women, I had a lot on my mind. I had a lot to weigh. And uh, I did not come to the floor yesterday to speak uh, with the many who rose to either offer amendments, proposed amendments to the Paycheck Fairness Act, or those who rose to speak to defend the act. And I don't want my silence yesterday to be construed that I don't think that there is an issue here, that I don't think that this is something that uh, needs to be addressed. Uh, Madam President, Yesterday was National Equal Pay Day, the day in which, according to the Department of Labor, that's when women's wages supposedly catch up to men's wages. We can argue, we can debate what that gap is, whether it's 77 cents, whether those, those statistics are outdated, whether it's closer to 82 cents, um, what the raw statistics are. We can debate that. But the fact of the matter is, and I think you and I would agree, agree Madam President, that if there's any discrepancy there, it's worth looking at. Why does a discrepancy exist? Is there disparity that stems from discrimination? Because if it stems from discrimination, it should not be allowed. Pretty simple. In, uh, in Alaska, the statistics are a little bit different than what we have on the national level. Equal pay day in my state is not going to occur until May 5th. May 5th. So as, as an Alaskan and as a woman and as one who has been in the Alaska job market, I want to know. Why, why the greater disparity in, in my state? We had a, we had a women's summit in, in Anchorage, Alaska back in uh, September. Um, I had worked with a former colleague in the state legislature to host a, a summit designed to really look at many of the issues that, that women face in Alaska, whether it's pay disparity, issues as they relate to, uh, to child care affordability, uh, access to health care, so many of the issues and concerns that, that women all over the country deal with as, as they are dealing in their day to day. And uh, we relied on a, a, a study that the uh, legislative research um, services from the legislature had uh, prepared, and a portion of that, that research tried to drill down into some of the pay disparities that we have in, in the state. In 2010, our State Department of Labor reported a wage gap of 67 cents, 33 percent. And this statistic is different than the overall national averages because in that review that was conducted by legislative research, it included part-time as well as full-time workers. And our part-time workers just generally receive lower salaries. So that, that, that's one reason for the disparity. But when you look at some of the areas where you have the discrepancies, um, it, it, it really does cause you to say, well, Wait a minute. In, in areas where <clears throat> these are occupations that are significantly male-dominated, um, crab fishermen, for instance, uh, welders on the, on the pipeline, uh, areas, occupations where, quite honestly, the pay is, is really uh, 
quite, quite substantial. You might look at that and you say, okay, I can understand why you might have discrepancy, why you might have disparity. But there are some occupations that have some pretty surprising statistics. For example, the average earnings for a male physician back in 2010 was $229,312, but the average for a woman physician was 166,000. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. In certain areas, you have uh, women who out earn men, dietitians, for instance. The ratio of women to men's earnings is 170%, according to the raw numbers. Legal secretaries, the ratio of women's to men's earnings is 132%. Teachers, the ratio of women's to men's earnings is 125%. And so, again, trying to peel back the onion here and really understanding what we're dealing with. Is this a situation where it's the difference in the career choice that has made the distinction with the pay disparity? If, if that's the case, what are we doing to encourage women to go into areas where, uh, where quite clearly your earning opportunities are, are, are better? So you know, when we look to occupations, um, I think that that is something that needs to be considered. But when we talk about a wage disparity, a pay disparity, I think we need to look very critically at to, as to whether or not there are other factors that come into play. Is it a career choice? Is it the need, the desire for flexibility? When I was starting out as a, as a young lawyer in Anchorage, um, I, I, when I started out, I was making what the, what the young men in the firm were making, but when, I, when my husband and I decided that uh, uh, we wanted to spend, I wanted to spend more time at home with our boys, I negotiated for that level of flexibility. That, well, that put me behind my male counterparts in the firm. I was good with that. That was a choice that I made. I wanted that flexibility. Are there other non-monetary forms of, of compensation that perhaps our statistics don't necessarily respect? We don't know. And this is where, this is where I, I came down in my decision process as to, to which direction to go on, on the Paycheck Fairness Act that we had just an, an hour or so ago. Do we want to try to address what I believe is an issue in that we do have a disparity and how we understand what causes that disparity and then what we do with that going forward is an important consideration. We have the Equal Pay Act of 1963 that imposes strict liability for wage disparity based on gender. It is in law. We have Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that protects against all forms of uh, employment discrimination, including basis on the basis of sex. But maybe we are not enforcing these federal laws as we need to. If after all these years we are still seeing areas of disparity that we cannot reconcile based on occupation or based on, 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 on desire for flexibility. Is there, does there continue to be discrimination? And that's what we need to get to. That's why some of the amendments that were presented yesterday that I had supported and many of my colleagues had supported on, I think were important to, to, to present to make sure that there is no retaliation for, for a woman when she inquires as to what others are making to determine whether or not there is discrimination. So making sure that, that we're able to access that information. But when you take a proposal, like we had with Paycheck, uh, uh, paycheck Fairness, that, that has an initial presumption that the employer has unlawfully discriminated against an employee if there is a di difference in, in pay. If you start off with a presumption of discrimination, it's pretty hard for an employer, particularly a hard employer, to, to, to deal with that, to defend that, to present the case, to, to really work through these issues. This sh the solution should not be more litigation as, as our response here. 
the solution really needs to be more all-encompassing because we have laws that are on the books that already say it is illegal to discriminate. But if we're still seeing instances of, of discrimination, and again, let's figure out where and why and how, then let's honestly try to address that rather than through messaging efforts that are designed to elevate the issue, which is fair, but then not be pragmatic about how we approach the solutions. And so, Mr. Mr. President, there was a, there's one, one final point that I want to include, and I'd, I'd ask that uh, a copy of an article that was included in this morning's Washington Post uh, regarding President Obama's persistent 77% claim on the wage gap gets a new Pinocchio rating uh, be included as part of the record. But included in this article is the following quote, and it's referencing a study that is done uh, by the Census Bureau, and it says, this study leads to the unambiguous conclusion that the differences in the compensation of men and women are the result of a multitude of factors and that the raw wage gap should not be used as the basis to justify corrective action. Indeed, there may be nothing to correct. I don't know that, Mr. President. There indeed may be more that we can correct. And I am willing to look to see, to continue to peel back this onion, to see if we can do more than we have done with the Equal Pay Act of 1963, doing more than we did with the Civil Rights Act of 1964, doing more than we did with the Lilly Ledbetter Act that I supported just several years ago. If there is more that needs to be done, I'm willing to work on it because I don't want to be in a state where men are being viewed as being paid a dollar to the 67 cents that a woman is being paid. I don't want those statistics to be valid. I don't want them to play out in my state. I want to understand how we ensure that there is a level of fairness. But I do think we need to make sure that we're looking keenly to the issue of whether or not there is discrimination at play or whether, in fact, there are a host of other issues that we need to consider as well. And I'm willing to work in good faith with my colleagues to do just that. With that, I see that uh, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee is with us, and I will yield the floor to him.